Hey everyone, welcome to a vlog I decided to create. The reason I decided to make this vlog is because I had been planning to put it in the podcast, but ironically, the subject matter at hand is also what ended up canceling that episode. So, you know, in a twist of irony, I guess you could say, the episode that was planned to cover this topic, the guest, the special guest, dropped for the very reason of the topic itself. So. I thought, well, I'll do it myself. And this is something that has been happening a lot lately. It's not one instance. It's definitely a pattern. And so I decided, and it's a greater, I think, a symptom of a greater issue, which is what the issue I want to discuss today, which is why is gaming content on YouTube getting so lame, so dry, so formulaic, so disposable? so bland I mean there's so many things you could say right just it's just taken a huge decline in quality and honestly I am really struggling outside being a content creator outside being a shmup podcast host or a shmup player at all even if I had nothing to do with shmups just the average gamer dude it's getting harder and harder to find interesting things to watch interesting stuff to get engaged with it's just everything is drying up to the point of mediocrity so I've decided I made this vlog because I actually want to point this issue out and I feel like no one in the YouTube space would actually go ahead and do that because I mean they're probably in the system of this thinking they're probably caught in this cycle of thinking or maybe I don't know what it is I don't know why people are the way they are right now but I decided to talk about it so a little behind the scenes talk the reason why this matters to me as a podcaster is because I've had I would say seven or eight special episodes planned written and agreed on and all of them fell through and interestingly all the people that these episodes fell through for were not players You'd think players, I mean, players gotta be flaky, right? No, like, players are the best guests, usually. They're always, like, they always follow through. So not players, not shmup homies, not members of the shmup community, not devs. You'd think game developers, they got a lot of shit to do. No, not devs. It's all, like, YouTuber-type people, gaming journalists, people within the gaming media, I guess you could say. People you would think... This is what you do. You, what you do is talk about games, and yet you can't follow through with an interview that you agree to. Like I said, if it's one time, two times, that's that's just how people can be. But when you get about seven or eight times of seven or eight different people, you start to see, okay, this is a larger pattern. This is something bigger than just one or two people being lazy, right? And so. And I'm seeing this not just with my own content, I'm seeing this, again, just generally on the people I've subscribed to over the years, on the channels I used to follow and no longer follow just because they either quit or their content has totally devolved. And so I kind of want to talk about this, I want to call it out because I feel like no one's, people mention it in passing but they always justify it. Or I feel like it's actually getting worse too. If I felt like people were starting to get better and it's just kind of a phase, but I don't think so. I think this issue of people laming out their content essentially for views is getting worse and worse to the point where on a work day, let's say I have an hour or two to kill. In the past two or three years ago, there was so much shit I could watch. There's so much gaming type YouTube content I could get into. I mean, I had a list right nowadays I got nothing I'm done I'm spent there's nothing interesting there's a few releases that come out every occasionally that I'm like oh excited about but overall it's just yeah things have gotten down gone downhill major so I want to talk about why I think this is and what I think people need to start you know maybe reassessing what the hell they're even doing because so let's start off with what's going on I feel like when you talk to other content creators or whatever YouTubers, I don't know what you'd call it, people who make videos, maybe that's how I should say it, or podcasts and stuff, um, a lot of what you hear 
or people who talk about it generally, a lot of what you hear, they're always kind of talking about their views, their, you know, like what videos work, what videos don't work, and what, and they will say, I will no longer make these videos because they don't get views. Like, why make these videos? They don't get the views. And I've actually had this one channel that I've been a long time fan of, and I feel like this is hitting them directly. And so, they won't ever watch this, but if they did, I'm hoping they know I'm talking about you, because this is happening to your content right now, where you have this great content over the years, and you're letting the pressures of YouTube or whatever just totally morph what you're doing, and for no benefit, really. The thing is, I guess I have to preface that who I'm talking about exactly, right? Because there's a lot of different types of YouTubers out there. So for the YouTubers who make a living on YouTube and actually make money and this is their full-time job, for them, whatever, you know, I'm not even talking about those channels because, like I said, they're actually making a living, so it, you can kind of see there's more of a legitimate reason, even if it sucks, which it does, but even if it sucks, I could put myself in their shoes and see myself making some of the decisions like, well, I don't want to go back to working in an office. I'd prefer to make bland, shitty content than work in an office, so let's do that. But what, who I'm talking about is actually people who don't make much money on YouTube. Who The people who used to do YouTube for artistic reasons, for deeper, interesting reasons than, oh, I want to make content that lots of people watch. You know, there was a time on YouTube where people made videos and gaming content not just out of passion, but out of, you know, the desire to create quality, interesting things that people can talk about, that, you know, can learn from, get entertained by. And now I feel like a lot of that has just shallowed out. Even among the niche, smaller YouTubers, and that's what's really bothering me. So for the big guys, the big people who, you know, they have the ads on their channels and they do their sponsored videos and all that kind of thing, whatever. Like, I'm not even talking about them. Like I said, if I was in their shoes and I was actually making money doing content, I wouldn't re I'd probably do the same thing, to be honest, so I wouldn't have to go back to working in an office. But for the people who do work in an office, I can't imagine, you know, like me, because I kind of went through this. There was a while, a few months ago, you can look on my website, have some articles about it, where I was kind of thinking, I was hitting kind of a ceiling where I felt like, okay, I've got the shmup audience. They at least know about me, the shmup people, if they like me or they don't, they at least know who I am. But, you know, there's a whole other world of players out there that I want to bring into shmups. That was the goal, was I want to get a hold of the casuals or the semi-casual gamers and maybe immerse them in my content, like baptize them in my content to be into shmups. Because that had happened to me with other genres and stuff, like... The only reason I started playing Tekken was because I was a fan of avoiding the puddle. And I literally followed his content for four years and was like, okay, I'll play Tekken now just because every week I'm listening to this podcast about Tekken, right? Or the same thing with Guilty Gear. Like when, Gu when I first played Guilty Gear, just blind, I was like, eh, I don't really like this game. It's kind of weird. But the more, you know, content that came out surrounding it, the more videos, the more kind of immersed I got in that scene, the more it grew on me and the more I kind of like understood it. And so I was hoping my content can do the same thing for non shmup players. I mean, that's still a hope. But these days, I think those that possibility is shrinking. And I'm starting to just let go of that desire. I'm just starting to say, okay, that's not going to happen. I'll get the random person or two that will stray into my content and get into it. I've seen that happen a few times, which is cool. But this but this hope of reaching to a wider casual audience is just not going to happen. And so I've learned to accept that. And so when I was, I think uh, two or three months ago, yeah, when I was exploring this, I was like, okay, how, what can I do to get more people interested in my channel? What can I do to get more people interested in the podcast? Like, what could I do? And I started exploring the options. And the more feedback I was getting, and the more exploring I was doing, the less I was happy about 
what was at hand. Basically, it was like all the shit that I thought was cool about my content, I had to get rid of. Like, everyone was saying, hey, for me, like, the review play, I love that format. The review play, like, an hour-long review or 30-minute review of a shmup slash a, a playthrough. I thought that was a really cool concept, and I really enjoyed making those. And everyone was telling me, no, this is not going to work. No one likes the idea of a 30-minute review of a shmup. And I was like, whoa, well, that's what I think is actually cool. And same with the podcast, right? People are saying, well... And it wasn't, I think the advice was sound. That's what I'm saying. Like, I think the advice, if I was going to go through and try and make my content more palatable and more accessible, this was good advice. Like, cut cut out all the hardcore aspects of my stuff. Keep it really cash. Keep it really accessible. And I was like, but then I started to think, why, why would I do this in the first place? That's not what I got into this to do. The whole point of the Electric Underground was to be hardcore shit and talk about hardcore stuff and talk about like really niche interests that you can't get anywhere else. You can't talk about this and get this anywhere else. It, and yes, the player base and be, listener base is going to be tiny, but they're going to find they're going to be the people who find this stuff. And so I was like, forget it. I'm not going to go down that route. And so I never did. I just decided, okay, I'm just going to have to accept that this is the end. This is the max of my content. I'm going to get about 300 plays per ep. That's just what it's going to be. And my YouTube channel is going to be about 500 subscribers, maybe. And, you know, a couple hundred views on whatever I'm doing there. Like, that's just my fate in this world. So... I just accepted it, and I honestly am happier for it. But I think what's going on is that people who are were in a similar position to me did not go that route. They went with the, okay, let's make this accessible, let's make this easy, let's make this fast. Because everyone tells you, YouTube tells you, everyone tells you, make your content easy to produce, make it kind of shallow to be honest there's no other way to say it it can't be too hardcore it can't be too catered to a specific audience it needs to be general and shallow and kind of formulaic too right and i don't mind formulaic content but at the same time if it's so formulaic that it's not interesting it gets to be where i pull up my youtube feed and i'm subscribed to a lot of different people and i just do this I'm on, if I'm on my phone, I'm just going Yeah, there is about 50 new videos to watch today. None of them look at all interesting to me. It's all just... And a lot of it too, they'll be like duplicate things. Like, there'll be five videos about the same thing. I go... Hum, hum, hum. Okay, five videos about this topic. And then I pick one, maybe. If I'm interested or not. And so... It's not horrible, but it's kind of like, I don't know what to call it. It's kind of like opening a newspaper or something. It's not as interesting as it used to be where I'd pull up my subscriptions and there would be a new Avoiding the Puddle podcast episode and I'd be like, oh damn, I gotta watch this. Or a new Melee It On Me episode, oh I gotta listen to this. Or um, I'm trying to think of some of the other cool stuff from the past that has just gone away. There's a lot of it. Um, ruminations, the lore runner. Um, if I, the thing is, if I start naming people, <laughs> you'll know who I'm talking about. So the people I named, maybe I'll talk a little bit. The lore runner is still good, but like avoiding the puddle is a really good example, actually. Where um, if you guys don't know, he's a fighting game tech and YouTuber uh, that had a podcast that was one of the inspirations for the Electric Underground. Actually, the avoiding the puddle podcast. And it was, the podcast was a hardcore niche podcast about Tekken when Tekken was not popular. When Tekken was like almost shmup-like and how unpopular it was. No one cared about it. No one liked it. Only Tekken players liked it. And so the, yeah, it was about, a, it's still larger than shmup, but it was a pretty small user base and listener base. And I followed that every week because every week he was just bringing the heat on those episodes. I still go back and listen to them sometimes, they're really good. But then once Tekken got popular and Eris got popular as a personality and stuff, 
he quit the podcast and now his content is just like meme content or him just saying or like I said like a BuzzFeed type stuff or like the what's the news kind of stuff like that's kind of what the direction everything has gone all my favorite channels have now gone to be like what's the what's the reddit topic we're going to talk about today and sometimes the thing is sometimes that works if it's an interesting topic and you're like oh okay this is interesting but when there's no interesting topics which happens a lot i just have a week of just boring ass content and there's no podcasts to fall back on like podcasts are definitely going the way of the dinosaur like no one does podcasts anymore and the podcast one of the last ones that i really liked canceled last week they just said fuck it we're not doing it anymore and why did they say fuck the podcast was it because no one listened no it was because they found that their podcast audience and their youtube audience were two distinct groups and the podcast audience was of course smaller you know about a thousand a thousand five hundred people and their youtube content was you know I don't know what, like 25,000 or, you know, up in there. So they're like, okay, the podcast is a lot of work. We only get about a thousand views per episode. Fuck it. We're not doing it anymore. Even though we have this fan base that loves it. Instead, we're just going to focus on the YouTube stuff because from a business side, and again, it's like, okay, but I know this channel did not start out as a business. That was not the goal, right? But from a business perspective, let's just focus on videos. And the funny thing is, is in the past he talked about, well, I can't make the videos I want to make anymore because the videos I want to make, no one watches. So I have to make these very general, uh, like I said, general, you know what I mean? I'm trying to think like core style videos where they're covering well-known franchises. They're the, basically the most widely appealing stuff they can do. Instead of covering the niche stuff, instead of covering like interesting niche topics, bringing on random guests, myself would have been one, right? But no longer. So yeah, and we're, this was the, the, the podcast that we were going to discuss this type of stuff. But ironically, it was canceled for the... Uh, anyway, I talked about this earlier. So, yeah, so... This is something that I'm really tired of seeing. And the thing is, is there's no voices against it right now. There's no one... Yeah, there's people who mention it. But I mean, the thing is, is people will say it. But no one's actually really getting behind it. And the idea that I want to start putting out there... And I have a small audience, so this is like not going to go very far. But the, the thing I want to put out there is I want YouTubers to stop justifying this and stop like making everything come down to views. That it's, it's getting annoying to me. I'm getting tired of everything coming down to views. And it's funny because I know people who have maybe followed me on my Discord or some of my articles, you know, talking about this. I'm talking about views. But at the same time, I'm talking about him, but I'm not canceling my content over it. I'm talking about it and saying, hey, this is kind of messed up, this and that. It's impossible to get guests because I don't have enough views. It's impossible to get larger. Like, it's harder to move out of the hardcore and into the more general scene because I don't have the viewership to back me up. Because there's a lot of cool stuff I've wanted to do. That's the motivation. It hasn't been oh, I want more views just for the sake of it. It's always been, I want more views so that I can get larger entities that I want to do collabs with to pay attention to me. Because how it works is there's like a cast system, I like to say. I, I said this the other day and someone thought that was too harsh, but that's kind of how it is. There's like a, a click system where a YouTuber of a certain view sub, subscriber count or viewer count or whatever generally will not associate with a smaller one and the weird thing is is that if you think about it it actually makes zero sense this logic is like eighth grade logic because take for example on my podcast i've gotten a literal ceo of a company to come on my podcast for two hours 
the CEO of XR Arcadia took the time to talk to me when I was literally no, a nobody. I mean, I'm still nobody, but I was even less of a nobody then. I had like no viewers. <laughs> it was like 150 at the time, and yet he took the time to come on to me. Same thing with developers, same thing with people who aren't media people, like players, developers, uh, CEOs, business people. And you think about it, why are they coming on my podcast? Why are they agreeing? And why aren't other media people agreeing? And it's because the mentality is different. If you're a CEO, if you're a dev, the mentality is go everywhere you can. It doesn't matter how small, it doesn't matter you know, what the venue is. You want to get your shit out there everywhere you can go. So it's worth your time to even hit up the smaller stuff to get your shit and promote your shit everywhere. Which makes total sense. I love that way of thinking. But for the bigger, like, YouTubers, they don't see it that way. They don't think in that direction of, hey, this guy has a small viewership, but there's still a viewership there. It's small, but I could still maybe get some of those people to be interested in my shit. And maybe I could, you know, it'd be still be worthwhile. Because what it is, is that media people are like middle schoolers, honestly. Where they think about it, they don't think about what they could gain. They always think about what you could gain. And feel like you're leeching off them. It's like, oh, he only wants to talk to me to leech off my viewers and get my viewers interested in his stuff. Which, if that happens, does that actually harm you? Does that actually do anything negative to you no of course not it's only positive it can only be if you get two youtubers a big one and a small one and they exchange like they have a collab and it's a really good collab everyone wins it's not like <laughs> it's not like a tribe system where your viewers just leave and go to the other person and like they detach from your channel and go to the other channel that's not how it works like collabs and working together only helps everyone but there's this eighth grade mentality of you're just trying to leech off me I have no business talking to you I have no business working with you and what ends up happening is I feel like I've legitimately offered some really good content to some people whose channels and stuff they're popular but is their content that good maybe maybe not but I feel like I'm legitimately offering you some great content I mean, I've wrote up this script, I've written up these, like, interview topics. I am a professionally trained interviewer outside the world of YouTube. I know views and all that are, like, such a big deal, but you know there are qualifications outside of people's view counts, right? There are skills people can, can get. There's people, yeah, with qualifications outside of just your YouTube subscriptions, and people don't see that. So, like I'm saying, when I'm talking to these people, I've said, hey, I'm hitting them up with all these ideas, I'm showing them scripts, I'm showing them my content, like, hey, these are some interviews I've done, I think they've gone really well, and so, I think what I would like to see from people is, like, when people approach me for stuff, which happens almost never, but it has happened a few times, like a, a, a game dev, for instance, um, the devil, oh my god, I'll have to... Devil, not Devil Crush, Demon's Tilt. So when the Demon's Tilt dev contacted me and said, hey, I want to come on the podcast and promote Demon's Tilt, I could have been all hidey tidy, you know, oh, but I'm such a famous podcaster. I don't know if you're worthy of my time or whatever. But I was like, no, that's not me. I really love indie games and indie development. So I was like, let's check out the game. And I basically told them, yeah, of course. If the game's good, I will say it's good. If the game's not good, I will point out what I think could be improved. Like, I'm just going to give you my objective view on your game. And, of course, well, not of course, but luckily, Demon's Tilt is badass. And it was a really cool game, so I was really excited to talk to him about it on the podcast. And I think, even if he doesn't get a ton of exposure from my my interview with him, he could take that interview and use it elsewhere because I think the interview I did was really well done like professionally speaking or I guess quality wise it's a quality interview so he could have done stuff with that interview or you know put it on his own shit or whatever he wanted to do with it but that's what I'm saying is people on YouTube right now are not looking at quality they don't value quality they only value views 
they only value what they can get from the views. That's all it comes down to. And I'm getting tired of it. And I think people need to pull their head out of their asses because it's getting stupid. And all the content that I love, like these days, I'm going back to how I was in middle school and high school where I don't even use YouTube as much. I'm like listening to damn books on tape again because it's like, okay, there's like no, there's nothing good out right now. It's really bland. It's really boring. And the annoying, the really annoying part is whenever something cool comes out, it lasts for like three episodes or a few episodes and they quit because it's all about them views, right? So they, they come out with something. It's really good. I'm really into it. I'm like, this is great. And then they quit because they're like, well, it's just not working. We're not getting a lot of views. Why bother? It's like, because there's more, there's more to this than just your views and making things for views. Like you're making great content. People are telling you it's great. Yeah, your viewer count is small and maybe it will never get bigger. But if you, if that's all people do, that's like the, everyone's motivation these days. And I feel like in the past, it wasn't like that as bad. It wasn't like, um, like talk about STG Weekly, right? That's a great example. I think the shmup, the shmup content is all that way though, because shmup content never gets views. It's never going to be popular. So you just have to accept that if you make shmup content. And again, that's why I think there's so little shmup content out there. I mean, think about it. There is very little shmup content. There's STG Weekly. There's Studio Mud Prints. There's my stuff, Game Boy Guru stuff, Agro guys, and then you know, and then there's the super players and stuff, and that's really awesome too. Like the gameplay vids, those are great. But I mean, like content around shmups is really sparse, and I'm sure there's more out there that I'm not remembering. But you don't see a lot of people making it, and I think it's not just because the genre's niche. I don't think that's the complete reason. I also think it's because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where people know it's not going to get views, they know it's not going to get popular, and so why bother, right? And if you think about my podcast, you know, if I was in this only to get views and popular, why would I be still putting out content as I am? Why would I continue? I've only, I've only grown a minuscule amount and I've pretty much capped out, so there's just... I just, uh, I don't know, this is a little rambly, but I feel like it needs to be said and I'm getting really, really sick of this being the constant justification for everything where it's like, well, I'm not getting views, I'm not going to make this anymore, I didn't get views. It's like, yeah, but was it good? Was it not? No one talks about quality anymore. The, I want the discussion to start going back to, is this quality? Is this interesting? Is this engaging? Do people like it? Do the people not like it? Because these days, a lot of people will make bad, shitty content. They know it's bad and shitty, but they also know that it doesn't matter if it's bad or shitty, as long as it gets watched. Because people will watch bad, shitty stuff. I mean, that's human nature. That's never going to change. And so, and like I said, if this, this isn't necessarily about, like, the top-end YouTubers who are actually making money and paychecks because that's a whole different world than what I'm talking about, right? Because, yeah, I guess if you're going to be a full-time YouTuber and do the YouTuber thing, like, making quality content these days maybe is not the way to go, right? It definitely doesn't look that way. But at the same time, it's like, okay, not everyone can be a full-time YouTuber, okay? That's just not a reality. And if you, if you think that's your reality, then, um, yeah, go ahead and do whatever you have to do. But I hate this weird middle ground that a lot of channels around my size and larger are in right now, and they need to get out of it. They need to stop. They need to stop being all about the views, because these days, it's just going to keep getting worse. That's why I'm talking about this. It's just going to get worse. The good content is just going to stop getting views. It's going to get worse and worse, because... Everything YouTube, everything YouTube is doing right now is pushing people towards shallow, uninteresting, bland, stupid content. For instance, you can't say anything interesting in your content anymore. You can't swear. You can't say fuck off. You can't say anything interesting because that gets blocked. You can't do anything interesting like 
in the past people would do cool stuff with music they do cool stuff with videos and all that kind of stuff you can't do that because that gets copyright claimed and all that so it's like okay you literally if you want to do interesting creative stuff you're not gonna get money anymore that's just not people need to leave that at the door and I think people need to just start embracing being creative again on YouTube instead of being all about views and money and all that kind of stuff because like I said if you're in that top percent that are actually making money like real money as in you don't have to go to your nine to five anymore I don't know. That's your own world. Do whatever you need to do because, yeah, I mean, if I didn't have to work my 9 to 5 and I could just make videos all the time, and I do make a lot of videos, so it's not like I have a complete ignorance of what that would be like. I would do it. I mean, why not? But of all, but of course, of all the people I've brought, tried to bring on to the show and all the people I've tried to talk to, were any of them actual full-time YouTubers? No. Were any of them making real livings off of YouTube? No. It's just all these stupid high school games. And I think it, it's stupid. And same thing with Twitter, too. I'm talking about YouTube, but Twitter's... Like, the world's all becoming this way. It's all being turned into this caste system of blandness and formulaicness and obviousness. And it's getting really boring to me. Same thing with Twitter, right? Where you, Twitter's stupid. I I hate the way I use it, and I will continue to use it because it's useful in some ways. But overall, as a system, I think it's really stupid because how it works is it's again it's like this caste system where you can It's like high school, really, except worse because I think it's worse in high school because at least in high school, boldness and charm and all these kinds of things can get you somewhere. But with Twitter, it just all comes down to your followers, and that's it. And it really frustrates me because, like, I don't... The problem is it's hard to talk about this without calling people out directly, and I don't necessarily want to do that because maybe someday they will work with me. But there are a lot of entities, I guess you could say, that are gaming-related, that are sort of related to shmups and, like, the hardcore-ish side of gaming. And it's stupid because they put stuff out on Twitter and it's pointless. It's pointless because the only people they talk to and reply to are famous people or semi-famous, you know what I mean, like well-known gaming people. Those are the only people they'll answer or talk to and interact with. And I think it's really stupid because they will put out some blatantly un uninformed stuff about gaming or sometimes even shmups. I'll hop on to say, hey, you know, like, hey, check this out, check that out. You should look at this, you could check this out. No, it's never gonna get answered. It's never, they're never gonna take interest. It's all about the views, baby. And so if I had, you know, if I had 50K followers or I don't know how, I honestly have no idea what the threshold is. 3K, 5K, who, who cares? But if I had some kind of large following and I hop on and say, hey, you know, and I say exactly the same thing, all of a sudden now they're like, okay, I'll pay attention to you. And I think it's stupid. Because it's just this, like I said, it's just this system of perpetuating the lame asses get more and more attention, the interesting, cool stuff gets less and less attention, and it's all high school all over again. It's like, I graduated high school, I'm sick of it. So, yeah, that's my, that's my little uh, sermon, I guess you could say, about my feelings on the state of gaming, YouTubing, and for myself going forward, I've just embraced that I'm gonna just be this rando dude forever, and you know, I think it, it honestly feels good just to be happy with that, because it was, it was stupid when I was trying my best, because there could be a lot of benefits to if I was getting more popular outside of myself, right? Like, for instance, one of my things I really wanted to do was start promoting indie shmups like that was my big goal because I think because before I did the podcast I had an interest a pretty deep interest in making indie shmups and stuff but the, you know I'm a nine to fiver now I just don't really have the time I could do that but I'd have to quit the podcast and uh, honestly I feel like it's not necessary I feel like the content I create does more for the shmup community than my jank ass indie shmup and I release it and you know it's kind of mediocre or whatever 
but what I could do is I could help push forward the great stuff, you know, the Zero Rangers, the Blue Revolvers, the Rolling Gunners of the world, and get them more tension and get them more sales so that they make more games and so there's more like a thriving ecosystem. That's really what I want, is I want to create a thriving ecosystem for shmups where Cave says, hey, you know, maybe it's worthwhile to actually make another shmup because there's an audience now. There's people who will buy the games. Because before really delving into this stuff, you kind of just assume, because you'll see articles or you'll see things here and there, that the sales for cave games or the sales for shmups were tight. They were okay, right? They were obviously weren't blockbusters, but they were enough to keep going. But then when you start researching the sales, you start to see, hmm, I see why Cave stopped making games, because they aren't selling more shit. You know, there's just no sales. And then you start to see, okay, why aren't there any big companies making shmups? Because they don't sell. It's that simple. And so the same thing with the indie devs, like why are there, there are indie shmups and stuff, but there's not this huge thriving scene of them like indie platformers where, you know, at the game awards, they're giving out game awards to Zero Ranger, which definitely deserves it. Or, you know, you look at Undertale and Zero Ranger, to me, they are both excellent games, both top-notch games, and yet Undertale, the RPG, gets all this critical acclaim, attention, becomes a world-famous game. Zero Ranger, like, gets a lot more attention than most shmups, but still not very much. Same thing with Blue Revolver, you know, you don't hear about that in publications. When, they, when people do best games of the year, even the cave stuff, even the M2 stuff, no one talked about Destiny. No one talked about it. And so they know, they're not even going to bother to bring that to the West, I bet. And I know, well I don't know, but I suspect that the only reason we're getting M2 ports is because the Shot Triggers team is just a bunch of nut job shmup players themselves and they want to make the games and play them and preserve the games. I think that's kind of the motivation behind M2 is it's literally not making any money, the shot triggers. It's not making much money, but it's just enough to justify making the devs happy. I think it's definitely a passion project. And so how long it'll go on, I don't know. I don't think for super long. I don't I don't anticipate the M2 releases continuing for that much longer. I'd be happy if that's not true. I'd be happy if they kept going into the PS5 and through that generation, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll probably get maybe three or four more, and then that might be it. Who knows? I mean, it's hard to say, but anyway, that's always kind of my headspace with this sort of things. Isn't when I've talked about getting more views, getting more attention, it's not really for just the pleasure of seeing that number get higher on my channel and stuff. It's because with that more attention, there's stuff I really wanted to do with it. Like I'd really want, for instance, to get in direct contact with things like Eurogamer, with things like um, IGN or the other gaming publications or other YouTubers. Like, I mean, what Dunkey just mentioning Zero Ranger did a massive amount for that game. So like getting it with more outside people just to get more attention on the games get more interest you know kind of build up that ecosystem but I don't know I don't think that's gonna happen I think we're just stuck in the corner and we're probably gonna end up that way and I think a lot of the reason why isn't just because we're a niche audience it's also because everyone who could help or everyone who could be interested don't take an interest because they look at the shmup community, they look at our low view counts, our low sub counts, our low Twitter counts, and they're like, they're not worth our time. And even, like, for instance, the My Life in Gaming documentary, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The My Life in Gaming did a special episode that was solely the Shot Triggers team talking about Battle Grega. It's the best thing on their channel, in my opinion. I mean, because I'm a shmup player, but anyway, it's it's an awesome, you know, interview. And when they were talking about it in their stream or whatever, they're just kind of like, yeah, I'm glad we did it. It's no one's going to care about it. You know, it's not the kind of thing we'll really follow up on. It's just kind of an extra that, you know, the hardcore people could dig. And it's 
I think it's like one of their lowest views videos on their channel. And so that's what I'm talking about. It's like quality is not, does not equate with view counts. And I've actually been skimming through YouTube and finding some pretty interesting stuff and their view counts like mine. It's like 1k, you know, and less. And I feel like honestly, the smaller channels that have no hope of getting big are, are the ones now producing somewhat interesting content. Whereas before I always felt like the middle-ish channels, you know, the channel that was going to be on my podcast, a great example of this, where they have some viewership, so they have some motivation and they have some expertise. You know, they used to be making good content, but I feel like now they're they're caught in that cycle of, oh, I want to increase my view count, so I'm going to stop making videos that I like to make, and I'm going to start making just these formulaic, by-the-book videos that I know everyone will watch, and that will make my sub count bigger and make my view counts bigger. What purpose that serves, I'm not sure, other than if they are planning to quit their desk job, maybe? Maybe that's what it is. Maybe what it is is that a lot of these channels are getting a taste for the possibility of quitting their jobs and they're like, fuck it, I want to quit my job, so I'm going to go down that route. And I guess if that's the motivation, then uh, I can't really blame you necessarily, but I also feel like you've got to just be honest about that instead of doing this weird middle zone that all these channels are on where they're like, I'm artistic, but I'm also trying to get views. I want to make interesting content, but I also don't. So, I don't know. I'm sure I sound like an asshole in this video. And maybe I am an asshole, but I'm an asshole who has been trying to make interesting content nine times, and nine times had my interviews just randomly dropped, never talked to me again. I think that's pretty douchey. And I think it's like, you know, professionalism that doesn't fly but you know YouTube isn't about professionalism YouTube is just about getting views it doesn't nothing else matters it doesn't matter if you're douche to some smaller YouTuber or smaller podcaster it does that affect your view count that affect your sub count no keep on rolling baby so anyway I'm getting that out there and I'm hoping that maybe this video it will do nothing let's be honest it will do nothing but at least people Coming along to my channel, the, the small amount of you will get a kick out of it. So, thanks for watching.